Hi everyone, Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on mathematical research. Now, don't worry, this will be understandable to anybody who's done or is doing a course in multivariable calculus. So, the title is a little long. It's called Critical Perspectives of Pedagogical Approaches to Reversing the Order of Integration in double integrals. Now, that is a long title, but essentially what I'm going to do is just challenge the, the way that um, textbooks handle reversing the order of integration in double integrals. Okay, so let's look at the three points in this presentation. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to question the message in popular textbooks that reversing the order of integration is necessary when solving you know well-known problems well-known problems that you see in your standard um, multivariable calculus course now secondly i'm going to suggest an alternative the method of integration by parts okay so instead of having to reverse the order of integration in all the examples that I've seen in the literature, you can just rever uh, re uh, do integration by parts. All right, let me just chat, uh, pause for the live chat. Hello, Matthew, George, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your message. And thirdly, I'm going to look at the benefits and the limitations of this integration by parts method. So let me know if you've seen it before. Um, I've, I've been teaching these things for years and years and I've never seen it. So um, this is something new, something that I've published. All right, so the method in any sort of standard course on double integrals, the method of reversing the order of integration is used. And it um, relies on a theorem called Fubini's theorem, the mathematician who uh, came up with the following result. Okay, so I'm just putting it in here for completeness. Here it's just for uh, double integrals. It basically means that you can set up the integral um, either way, as long as you re-describe uh, an appropriate region. Okay, so let's get down to an example. All right, now I've here I've um, looked at an example of a in a book by Trim. Okay, but there are many other examples in the paper. If you click on the description, you'll will take you to the paper. But you know this is your classic instructional example right here. Okay, so you've got this um, double integral. There's no antiderivative of e to the x squared in terms of x. Uh, in terms of elementary functions, so they say, hey, let's reverse the order of integration. It says it's impossible to evaluate the double integral as it now stands. It's impossible, so we must reverse the order of integration. Well, what do you do? Well, in this example, the region of, in of integration is sketched, you recast it, you redescribe it, and the new limits of integration are determined. And then what you do is, once you've done that, you end up with something like this. So, so this integral and this integral by Fubini's theorem are the same. Okay, of course you can integrate this with respect to y. Easy, right? Well, let me show you another way of doing a problem like this. Okay? It involves integration by parts. Now, this has got some benefits and some limitations that I'll talk to you about in, in a minute. Hello, Satsmus on the live chat. Thanks for joining us. And one key element here is to insert a factor of 1. So think of the thing inside this inner bracket as a function of y. That's one sort of function. And then you've got this other sort of function here, this constant function 1. All right, so we insert that factor of 1. We let 
u dash be that one we let v of y be this thing in the square brackets and you apply integration by parts okay so if that's u prime u will be that and if that's v using the fundamental theorem of calculus you you can differentiate that okay so again I, I've, I've got sort of question marks here but you can find these in any standard textbook all right, so you apply the integration by parts formula, okay? And you end up with this mess here, but this becomes zero because if you sub in y equals two in y equals zero, this disappears. And then you've got this integral to do, which you can just do by inspection by the chain rule, okay? You get this. So you end up with this as your answer. Okay, so let me just go over that again, right? instead of doing what they do in all the textbooks uh, with this integral and reverse the order of integration so you get that we decided to integrate by parts by putting this bracket in a factor of one we made our choices of u prime and v and that led us to the other two and then applied the integration by parts formula so what Trim says then, is it impossible to evaluate the double integral as it now stands? It's not impossible. You can just do integration by parts. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, let's do another example, right? So just to summarize, we didn't need to do the reverse reversal of order of integration. We didn't need to draw a diagram. We didn't need to reverse the order, right? We can just think of it as integration by parts. Okay, another example. Adams, who's a very famous uh, mathematician. Again, this is a v similar to the previous one, right? If you look in Adam's book, you can see this one here, and, and um, the narrative is sometimes you'll even encounter iterated integrals whose evaluation requires that they be expressed as double integrals and then reiterated in the opposite direction. Okay, so similar to what we've done, we're not going to reverse the order of integration. We're going to insert a factor of one right here. We're gonna let this be u, this square bracket inside bv and compute u and v prime here again we've used the fundamental theorem of calculus if you apply integration by parts you get the result okay so what do you think let me just say something on the live stream here have you ever seen that done before I haven't and I've been teaching double integrals and multivariable calculus for about 15 years so I put all those ideas together did a survey of the literature and published it in fact I will bring a challenge to anyone watching this video now can you show me an example from a textbook where this integration by parts method won't work that's in some context of reversing the order of integration now, at the beginning, I said that we would also talk about the benefits and limitations of such a method. So what are the benefits? The benefits are kind of, um, well, they're nice because you don't have to draw a diagram. And if you're comfortable with integration by parts, then, um, then it, it's a very easy thing to do. You can just, just do it algebraically and um, move forward. What are the limitations? Well, because we're not drawing pictures, that can also be seen as a limitation because most people like to think visually and, um, you know, drawing a picture can sometimes really help us understand a problem. So that's a limitation. So anyway, the challenge remains. Can you find me an example in a, in a textbook or something where this method won't work? All right, lastly, 
I'll just show you the list of references. So Adam's book's very famous, so is Trim, so is Thomas's book, and this is the uh, publication associated with this video. Okay, everyone, I'll sign off now. Thanks for tuning in as always. If you have any questions or any comments, you can always put them in the comment section. Really enjoyed the live chat today. And um, I'll see you all again soon. Bye, everyone.